Hey guys, today I am going to talk about influencers ruining Magic the Gathering. And this is something I feel very strongly about. I don't take sponsorship. I haven't taken sponsorship I think, in five or six years now. I used to do these like candy boxes from Japan and so on. And like, I just got sick eating them. So I was like, okay, no, I don't want to do the sponsorship no more. Um, influencers, right, are people, and you know, we can talk about FTX, we can talk about BlockFi, we can talk about Graham Stefan and Andre Jonk and all these, you know, finance influencers, they got caught up with the FTX scandal. They told all their subscribers, hey, guys, put your money on FTX and BlockFi and we will be rolling and you can get some free money, free credit, free Bitcoin. And uh, it turned out they were both scams. <laughs> so they basically led the lamb to the slaughter and now, of course, they have apology videos. And most recently, people like the quarterling. So I like Jeremy, but uh, they have retracted established titles, which is this, you know, Lord, my Lord, my my lady, right? Uh, complete scam uh, located in Hong Kong. And yeah, they are definitely not planting no trees. I tell you that much. They're not planting the trees like they said they are. They charge you an additional $8 on top of your $50 PDF to be a Lord or a lady. And uh, yeah, that's no good. So anyway, the influencers, they are now being called. And this reminds me of Leanheart. Leanheart did not take the sponsorship. Hasbro approached them. It was really weird. Like they, they either ran out of magic players to like ask sponsorship for, or they just decided, hey, you know, like a great introduction product for a Pokemon player looking to get into magic is a thousand dollars a box. Which again, I mean, given how stupid they are, it could be lot. I mean, I, you can't put anything past the dumbasses at Wizard of the Coast. From a marketing perspective, they wasted what an opportunity. It really should be a celebration. Any card game, Magic is the oldest of the trading card games, lasted 30 years. That truly is something to celebrate. But of course, they blew it. And those d dumbasses. Like, so again, you have to understand that like, when you hire people and they're not the most qualified people, in fact, they have no qualifications other than their stances on social justice. Yeah, you're going to get this. You're going to get bad idea after bad idea. The Magic 30th anniversary was a terrible idea. There was nothing like the Pokemon celebration, which went pretty, relatively well. Again, you will have people who are upset, but for the most part, Pokemon people are very happy and they're happy today. Nobody's mad at Pokemon, man. The celebration, the 20, you just realized Pokemon had the 25th celebration months before and everyone left feeling, yeah, that was a cool celebration. Wow, Pokemon 25 years old. Then you get to the magic celebration. It's like, oh God, let's burn stuff down. The influencers, in my opinion, like the Ruxin 34, and again, he did apologize for both this and established titles, which he did both of those to uh, sponsorships. I think when you promote something to your subscribers, you're going to stand behind it. And it's, you know, egg on your face, like FTX and Graham Stefan, and he had to delete his entire millennial money podcast. And then you just got to start hiding the evidence, right? So you can go on to the next scam. Influencers like are the worst. And the reason they are the worst is they don't actually, I mean, <laughs> think about the two people they tried, the three people they hired, Brian Kibler, Ruxin and um, Leanheart. These three people don't even play Magic. One plays Hearthstone, one plays Yu-Gi-Oh, and one plays Pokemon. This is this is the that's this this is an insanity of influencers, right? That somehow they're going to convince a Yu-Gi-Oh player that the primary Magic product they should be buying is a thousand dollars. I mean, imagine you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player and you're hearing about this thousand dollar promotional item. <laughs> or you're Brian Kibler, you're daring to dream. Uh, I mean, it, it's so wild. It's like, how did they even pick these people? Like, you know, I, I, I get Hunter Pence a little bit because he likes Magic. I get Post Malone, I get Cassius Mars. Like, why Leanheart? Why Ruxin34? Why Brian Kibler? They have nothing to do with magic at all. Brian Kibler in the past has had it, but he's basically nobody in magic. No one cares about him anymore. He's been playing Hearthstone for the last nine years nonstop. And why, why this is so bad is because you know the only reason they're promoting this product is for the money. 
And when you hire people who will say anything and even get you into like an FTX scandal for money, that's what I think is bad. Um, and people say, oh, well, you have to make decisions yourself. It's not their responsibility, right? And then again, there's discussions on FTX and it's a bigger discussion we're having than just Magic 30th anniversary sponsors or influencers or whatever. We're just talking about the overall influencers and the market and the fact that, you know, they get, they're getting bags. They're getting established titles is paying $15,000 a video. One, five, zero, 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 a video. Imagine how much money they're making from these videos. Like, because again, their product is a PDF. So I want you guys to be like very careful in the sports card industry, whatnot, essentially is buying out every YouTuber. They're giving them $50,000 buying sprees from uh, Jeff Wilson, sports card investor, card collector to Ralph's cards. And they're giving $50 mystery boxes to card collector to Roth's car. I think Roth's cards. I just saw that. I don't remember card collector too. I assume they all get the same mystery box. And you have to understand when somebody does marketing this desperately and is paying this much money for small YouTubers like Roth's cards to promote something, it probably is not good. Uh, like FTX, you know, they're getting paid fifty thousand a video, fifty thousand a month base, and then you know, on top of the sign up. It's disgusting in my opinion, because I get it. If you're a magic player and you actually like the product and you get sponsored and you want to promote the product, that makes sense to me. I don't get if you're a Pokemon player, you don't even play magic. How are they, why are they even approaching you to sell this to your Pokemon kids or Yu-Gi-Oh or Hearthstone? And, and this is what I, I this is my biggest grudge when people promote something they don't even believe in. You know, I've always said this from as a lawyer, right? As a lawyer, I respect you. If you believe in something and you're not faking it for clout or something, I, I respect that because that's very uncommon. I don't think Ruxin even knows about magic that much. So, Influencers ruin stuff because they never do their research or homework like Spencer Cornelia. I could go down the and it's not, again, it's not only a problem in magic, it's a problem in sports cards or whatnot. Whatnot is a huge problem, I think, for the sports card industry. They essentially bought out everybody and now everyone has good things. They actually bought out Tolarian Community College too. I saw him on Whatnot the other day. When you have that much money, $50,000 a week, you know, for this mystery box, you know, this docs, this about pulp. It's probably because you're somehow related to gambling or some type of scam like FTX or a, a Rubet or casino or stake. The only people with that type of money to spend on this type of marketing on YouTubers like established titles or uh, BlockFi, I mean, I could go on and on. The reason they have so much money is because they're essentially stealing people's money. That's how I feel anyway, because their margins don't make sense. You cannot afford to pay. So then this product, which people you know, this 30th anniversary product, which I now consider a scam, the reason they're able to pay the Lean Hearts and the Ruxins and the Brian Kibblers, who probably got paid half a million dollars to make the commercial, is because the profit is so the, the product is so profitable. It costs them maybe a dollar to print and they're selling it for a thousand bucks. That sounds like a scam. I mean, like, I mean, established titles, I mean, it's nearly as bad. I mean, you pay $140 for a uh, fake title, a fake piece of land, a souvenir land, which they don't tell you it's illegal. I just think a lot of influencers in YouTube, they're always just constantly promoting scams. Or if it's not a scam, it at least is something that is not valuable to the consumer. It's something that feels like a scam or it's a bad deal. In fact, you know, actually, uh, now that I think about it for established titles, which is going around, a lot of the YouTubers who promote established titles and fighting on their behalf, they're saying that it's not a scam, it's just a bad deal. It's just a big ripoff. Well, I mean, if you believe the product you're pushing is a ripoff, which a lot of these YouTubers are using to defend themselves, 
but it's not a scam. Where where does the scam come? I mean, where's the line between scam and a ripoff? And that is the magic 30th anniversary. At what point does it become a scam that you're promoting as opposed to a blanket ripoff? And if your argument is I'm promoting a ripoff, not a scam, you got issues, dude, you got issues. And we see that with FTX, you see that with BlockFi, we're seeing this with established titles today, and we see it with this product. The more I look into this product, the more I realize this product really resembles the fake titles and lordship that in the Hong Kong company. Like I, I make videos on the established titles and the FTX and BlockFi, my other channel, Lust, L-U-S, and the parallels are uncanny. The more I make videos I make there, the more I learn about the established titles, especially, the more I realize, oh shit, like this 30th anniversary really was a scam. Because it was a product that is way, I mean, it's definitely a ripoff, but at what point does a ripoff become so bad it's just a blanket scam for your money? <laughs> Guys, leave me a comment below.